Hey dudes, it's Emily. Welcome to my video. Ta-da! Let me tell you a story. So today I woke up and I finished a book that I kind of liked. I liked it, I didn't super enjoy it, and it was kind of like meh to finish it. I didn't read any of it yesterday, so I was just kind of like meh. I really did not want to deal with the book. So I finished it, and I have to write a review of it, but I didn't want to write a review of it. And then I checked my emails, and then I read some, and I didn't want to respond to any. And then I was just feeling really down and like unproductive, so... I got my hair cut yesterday. As you can see, I chopped even more of my hair off because I can't be stopped. And I decided to try to curl my hair because I've never tried before. Well, I have tried before with the curling iron and for some reason I can never get those to work. So I tried the flattening iron and it like totally worked and it looks really cute. So I thought I looked good and I thought since I look good I should film videos. So here we are. Ta-da! That was my story. <laughs> so today I'm doing the ruler of books tag created by Ariel Bissette. Also explains why I'm wearing this crown and it looks really good with my hair and I'm just like really digging this. Also, look at little Bilbo. It's just looking over my shoulder. Boop, 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 boop. Anyway, so focus on my face. So this tag was created by Ariel Bissette, so I shall link her down below, but you'll probably subscribe to her anyway if you're like into booktube, and if you're not, I'm like, what are you doing? She's amazing. She created this tag about three weeks ago, and I haven't been tagged in it, and I don't really care. I'm just gonna do it. So... The tagline is, if you were the ruler of books, what kind of world would you create? I wish I were the ruler of books. So, the first question is, if you were the ruler of books, what book would you make everyone read? So, let's see. I think I would make everyone read my number one favorite book of all time, which is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. I love, love, love this book. I know a lot of people at least like around where I live, has to read it as like required reading in middle school, but I never had to do that, so I had a very different experience because, you know, in middle school, if you have to read a book, a lot of times you don't end up liking it because it's required and it's homework. Even I felt that way sometimes, as much as I love reading. Just so good. The story, it's just the story and the characters and together, it's like, mwah, mwah. So in case you don't know, The Outsiders takes place in 1960s Oklahoma in a small town. On the poorer side, there's a 14-year-old boy named Pony Boy, and his parents are killed in a car accident, and he lives with his two older brothers, and they live on the poorer side of town, and they're kind of rougher and tougher, and they like fight a lot, and they're called greasers, and they're known as being very like rough and tough people who like break things and jump people and steal and break stuff and that whole kind of thing. And on the other side of town is the richer side, and they're boys, they're mainly all guys, who are called socias and they are richer and they go to nice schools and they're all gonna go to college and have nice jobs, but they also have little gangs and they fight each other and they fight the greasers and the greasers fight the socias. The difference basically is the class difference and the fact that the socias, people are like, oh, they may have like beaten up these kids, but they're rich and they're gonna go to Yale and Harvard anyway, but then the greasers are like, oh, they're poor, so that nah, we don't care about that. Basically, that's whole whole dynamic, and it follows Pony Boy, who is like he is a greaser because his family is, and his friends and this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group of boys is his family. But he's also a little more studious, and he wants to get out of the town and do more of his life. And everyone around him wants that for him, but he also wants to fit into the greasers. So it's it's just it's so good. It's just oh, the characters are just so beautiful, and they just it's this wonderful group of boys who are just, the whole world is like against them kind of thing, like, nothing is in their favor, nothing goes right for them, but you're just like rooting for them anyway, and it like hurts because you know nothing good is going to happen, but it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing book. The reason why I think everyone should read it is because it's about so many different things, it's about class structure and, and family and friends and fitting in different places and labels and what labels can do to a person and how you can like you know take accountability for labels and you can own them but then they can also be placed on you and how to deal with both of those and it gives you another perspective on life it shows you what other people have to go through what other people do go through or have gone through it just shows you empathy that's kind of what it's all about it's a pretty short book too it's under 300 pages it's like two something and it's just it's amazing amazing I talked about that for like way too long, but it's my favorite book, so I can. So question two is, what would you abolish in book construction? What would I abolish in book construction? I think it means like in how books are made. Um, what would I abolish? What do I hate? Some books have really weird dimensions. Like this paperback of Carol is basically the normal size 
of a paperback, but this of uh, Jurassic Park is very weird. This is not as tall and it's way shorter. I think the shortness this way bothers me way more than the height. Because like a height, I think it looks cool when bookshelves have like varying heights of books, but like when they're pushed back really far <laughs> because they don't have the same width, that does bother me. So if I were the ruler of books, I would say all of them have to have the same width. Same width, but you can have different heights. That would be my rule. That is what I would put on the 10 book commandments. <laughs> Question number three is what author would you commission to write you any book? If I could pick one author to write me any book, that's like a really big question. I could totally go with J.K. Rowling because the Harry Potter series is so amazing, but also I would only choose her if I wanted to read a fantasy book because you could probably construct a really good fantasy book. But like that depends like what kind of book do I want to read. You know, another person that comes to mind, though, is Rainbow Rowell, because, as you might know, Fangirl is one of my favorite books of all time, because she just wrote it so well. Rainbow Rowell's books are much more character-driven, which I actually really, really like that. Really exciting plots are great and fun, and things that are really complicated, and there's a lot of details, and they all come together very intricately, and they're all woven together, and things are like, wow, at the end. Like, plots and books like that and stories are so cool, but also I can really, really appreciate a very character-driven story, and that's how Rainbow Rowell's books are for the most part, I feel like. Um, I was talking to one of my friends, not recently at all, maybe like a year ago, and she didn't like Rainbow Rowell's books so much because they were more character-driven and she likes a good story over great characters, and I tend to really like good characters. I feel like, like a book I just finished and I said I didn't want to finish this morning, the story was very interesting, but I just, the characters just kind of fell flat for me, and when that happens, the story I feel like can't really make it up for that, and Rainbow Rowell's character is always so well written, even if the plot feels very casual a lot of times, and you just kind of watch her characters go through life, and I feel like it really works the way she does it, and I love it, and especially the way she does Fangirl, the way she constructed Kath and her sisters, and every whole cast of characters in that book is amazing, and Kath is one of my favorite characters of all time, because it's a character that I can relate to way more than other characters, especially with the social anxiety thing. I think that was written very, very well for someone who experiences it. So I'm gonna take back the J.K. Rowling thing. I don't want a fantasy from her. Harry Potter is good. You can stop writing me books. I would pick Rainbow Rowell to write me something. Yeah. Question number four is what book would you demote to the library basement to make room for new books? What book do I hate so much that I want to put in the basement of the library of books that I own and I run? What book would it make someone go downstairs for? Maybe The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I really hated that book. Like, not because it made me sad, because I just felt, like, horribly manipulated, and it was totally focused on the wrong person, I think, in the... Um, I don't want to say things to make people offended, just because people have very strong opinions about that book, I think, and possibly, if you're more connected to the whole Holocaust situation, you might think very different things and whatever I say might offend you, and I'm afraid of that, but uh, I hate it boy in the striped pajamas and I would probably make you walk all the way downstairs to get that book because I didn't like it. Not because it made me sad, it just made me really angry. <laughs> so you gotta walk all the way downstairs if you want to read about that. Okay. How many times have I done that? I do that a lot. I also do like finger guns at people if I know you in real life. If I see you I'll go like eh. <laughs> That's not part of what I'm doing. Okay. Question number five. What cover artist would you commission to make a mural? What's my favorite cover? Okay. I might... Mm, a mural. Okay. Like for on my wall? Let's think. Let's think. Let's put my laptop down and think about this. Back to fangirl. This is one of my favorite covers as well. I love this cover. If we can like focus on it, it's not going to focus on it. And I actually know that the cover artist of this is Noelle Stevenson, and she also wrote Nimona, which I can't pick up because it's in this stack. 
Um, she is an actual artist, and I would probably commission her to do some, like, fan art for me, because she does some fan art on her side, and she does mostly, like, webcomics, and she does, um, Lumberjanes, she's written for The Runaways, she does a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I would probably pick her if I wanted her to, like, do some fan art for me, or actually, I created this, like, whole superhero in my mind, and I really want someone to draw it for me, so I can, like, write the story, and they can draw out the panels, and I can do, like, the dialogue and, like, the plot. I think that'd be so much fun to do that with somebody, and if anyone out there wants to do that, like, hit me up, because, like, I have this whole idea for a really great superhero, and I made, like, whatever. I made something for her. It doesn't matter. But if I could play, like, a real artist, I would pick Noelle Stevens, and so instead of, like, painting a mural, I'd say I want like a room full of fan art drawn by Noelle Stevenson and also I want my superhero, her name is Hourglass, to be drawn by her. So that's my answer. Another fangirl. Oh well. You can just die. Question number five is... What? Nope, that's wrong. Question number six is what character's face would you put on a coin? So I have a kingdom of books, I suppose that's what's happening. And I have a coin, like, uh, as currency, I suppose. And what character would I put on the face of the coin? Ha, huh? this would be, like, kind of a pun. Um... I'm assuming, I'm just gonna pick the character that means the most to me out of the history of me reading books and I'll have to go with Katniss Everdeen. I don't think that she would like to be on a coin. I think she would hate that, but I'd put her on a coin. Are we assuming that she's real in my kingdom of books? If not, then I'll put her on there because she doesn't have any opinion, but if she was real, she would hate it and I'd still do it. But in case you don't know, I'm pretty sure you've done this before, but I wear this arrow necklace every single day of my life and I have worn this for... I've had this one for a year and a half now and I had another one for maybe two years beforehand so I've been wearing this uh, an arrow necklace for a really long time every day and I wear for Katniss that is the point of it there's another meaning behind when I got in the reason for it but the main reason one of the main reasons is Katniss so I have her with me every day because she means a whole lot and I really want to write a blog post about how much the Hunger Games meant to me when I was in high school because it's like a real intense thing but um yeah so if I'm gonna pick any character just to look at every day, to have everyone else look at it all the time, be like, this is the most important character ever! It's Katniss Everdeen. Yeah. And the last question of this beautiful book tag where I get to rule everything with my cute little crown is what book would you award the Ruler of Books 2016 prize to? Ruler of Books 2016. I'm going to take this as I'm going to give the award to the best book I've read so far in 2016, and it's only May, and I've only read, I think, 17 or 18 books, which is really low for me at this point of the year, which is fine. So I'm going to pick the best book I've read so far this year, and I'm going to pick a book that I already held up. Oops. I shall award the... What's it called again? Hang on. Hang on. I shall award the Ruler of Books 2016 to my fi- Okay, throwing it on the ground. I shall award the Ruler of Books 2016 award to my favorite book of the year so far, which is Carol by Patricia Highsmith. Also, previously titled before they made it into a movie, um, The Price of Salt. This is one of my favorite books I've ever read. This is one of the best books I think I've ever read. It was the first book I read this year. When I read it, I was like, oh crap. Like, Nothing's gonna beat this. This is I already won. There's no point in reading. Like I told people that and they're like, yeah, right, as if that's that good. No, it's that good. This story follows Therese Belovet. She's the main character. She's 19 or 20 years old. She's pretty young. Therese lives in 1950s, I believe, 40s or 50s, New York City. She has a boyfriend, but she really kind of likes hanging out with him, but he does, she doesn't really like doing sexual stuff with him. She really doesn't like it. She never really has done it. She's kind of like standing off and he wants to go to Europe with her and she's kind of like, I don't know if I want to go to Europe with you. And she has a seasonal job at a department store in the doll section and this older woman in her mid to late thirties named Carol Aird walks in and Therese falls in love and it kind of just follows their love story and it's amazing. Like it's so, so good and it's written very well and it's so progressive for the time that it was written because I'm just gonna say right now, it's not sad. Like it's not dramatic, nothing like really, really horrible. You know, like really horrible, like no one dies. It's not like 2016 where all the gay characters still get killed off everything. Uh, no, it's not like that, which is amazing. And it's just written beautifully and the story is very, very beautiful and I highly recommend this to everybody. Carol is one of my favorite books. So this is the Ruler Books 2016 award winning book. Pop, 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 pop. 
Ta-da! That is the ruler of books tag. That was very fun. I liked pretending like I was the king of books. Yeah, with my little crown. King of books. Um, should I tag people? I usually don't tag people for tags, do I? I'll tag three people. We'll see if they do it. You don't have to do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it out there. Whitney from Weedy Novels. Hey friend, you should do this. Also, Riley from Riley Marie and Elizabeth from whatever your channel name is. I can't remember. But I want to tag you because I didn't get to talk to you at BEA and I'm really sad about it. I totally did not see you at all and I can't believe that happened. And now I can't remember your channel name, but you know who you are and I'll like tag you somehow so you know. <laughs> or maybe I'll put your, like, your name right here. I think it's like Elizabeth and your last name, so I can't remember your last name. Ah! Okay, well, thank you for watching that. I hope that was fun for you to watch, read. Read? You're not reading this. So thank you for watching. You've made it to the end. Congrats and thank you for watching this. Uh, I want you to answer something. What would your required reading be if you were the ruler of books? What one book would you want people to read if you were the king of books in this book kingdom that we all live in? I want you to answer that in the comments. I want to see what your answers are. I feel like I'll get very interesting answers. Lots of variety. If you want to answer any other of these questions in the comments, I would love that. I think they're really fun questions. And if you end up doing the tag, also let me know, even if I didn't tag you. You're all obviously tagged. Just do it. It was fun. Thank you for watching. I always say that. I have lots of links in the description bar. As usual, I have added my Tumblr, which I made like three weeks, four weeks ago, just because I wanted to talk about uh, Civil War, so it's mostly Civil War stuff. Also, I haven't used it in like a week, but it's there if you want to check it out. And thank you for watching, as I said six times before, and I will see you in my next video. Or more of like, you'll see me. Hmm. I'll see you later. I gotta go. Bye. Ba -ba -da -ba. Ah.